Uh, I'll talk about the uh, cervical pain. Uh, first, I'll talk about the cervical facet joint pain. If you, your patient complains the, the posterior neck pain, uh, similar to this pain mapping, they are eligible to uh, block the facet or medial branch. If the patient have the facet joint pain, you have to block two nerves called the medial branches. So I'll talk about the medial branch block, uh, especially for the target point and how to count the level. Uh, the soft tissue are, are very thicker and thicker at the lower cervical level. So it is very challenging to uh, scan and manipulate the needle in lower cervical level. Even though I demonstrate about the sonar anatomy and ultrasound guided neuro anatomy or in cataract study, uh, it is very hard to demonstration, demonstrate the nerve at daily practice. So I'll uh, introduce a different uh, technique about the facet joint block or middle branch block. So let me show you some a landmark about the facet or articular pillar. Uh, this is a lateral view of the articular pillar. When you see on the lateral view, you can see the diagonal of the articular pillar. When there is a, a line connection, a crossing line, there is an intersection. Uh, this is a typical uh, CM guided target. So originally, I uh, introduced the sonar anatomy uh, along the facet joint plan. But on the daily practice, I usually uh, scan like this, more horizontally. Sometimes when you scan the more lower leg, you can uh, scan in a more uh, different way. So I have to introduce a new uh, landmark, so I call the the posterior tubercle, and posterior aspect of the tubercle, you can see some groove. And finally, you can find the, the landmark for the, the articular pillar. Let's see the typical cervical vertebra from C3 to C5. You can see the our posterior tubercle, and these are uh, lateral aspect of the uh, articular pillar. So posterior tubercle uh, arise from the anterior half of the articular pillar with the right direction. So uh, most of the articular pillar is located the posterior aspect of the posterior tubercle. So you can see and find the posterior tubercle and groove and articular pillar. Uh, let me remind you of the, the most prominent landmark of the C5 articular pillar. Medial branch arises from the dorsal rami of the, of the nerve root, uh, cross over the upper edge of the uh, posterior tubercle, and cross over the uh, raised form of the articular pillar. This is the typical sonar anatomy with the transverse ultrasound scan. Uh, this is an uh, anterior aspect, this is posterior. You can see the prominent posterior tubercle. Uh, in the posterior aspect of the posterior tubercle, there's, there, there's a groove, and you can see a hump of articular pillar. So the articular pillar is the landmark for the medial branch block. Let me see about the uh, C6 and C7 vertebra. Uh, you can see the posterior tubercle and articular pillar. At six, six, you can see a more prominent posterior tubercle, and you can see a more smaller size and less prominent articular pillar. And another uh, way to differentiate between the C5 or C6, there is a wide gap between posterior tubercle and articular pillar. And C7, you cannot see any uh, division of anterior and posterior tubercle from the transverse process. And transverse process is very prominent. 
and there is no or scanned articular pillar. So you cannot find any or articular pillar at C7. The middle branch of C7 cross over the uh, upper edge of the transverse process and to the posterior. So most of the case, you cannot see any waste formation uh, of articular pillar at C6 and C7. You can only rely on the anatomy of the posterior tubercle and articular pillar and uh, transverse process of C7. This is a typical also anatomy of the C6 and C7. You can see the uh, typical shape of the anterior and posterior tubercle, and you can see the posterior tubercle, and there is a clip behind the posterior tubercle and it's a, a gap, and you can see the less prominent of the articular pillar, a posterior aspect of the, the posterior tubercle. Uh, this is a target for the C6, the middle branch block. When you see the uh, uh, C7 transport process, you cannot see any uh, anterior tubercle, so only you can see the transport process. So if you scan the transport process, uh, you can only uh, find out some one landmark is the mean the upper edge of the transport process. That's the target for C7 middle branch block. How to count? When you count down from the C2, 3 facet, you can uh, count the C3, 4, 5 level easily. But uh, it is difficult to uh, count down from C2, 3. Uh, so you, you need another landmark. So you have to study the shape of transfer process unique to each level and sliding the probe to posteriorly. And, or sometimes you can count up from C7 transfer process. Uh, this is a oblique scan. This is a cranium in this uh, caudal. Uh, this is a, a longitudinal scan along the, the facet uh, from the sub uh, mastoid area. So you can see the prominent uh, first uh, joint, that is the C23 facet joint. So you can count down from C23 facet. Uh, patient position depends on the uh, approach. So usually I use the oblique spine position for uh, lower cervical, especially C6 and C7. Most of the I use the lateral decubitus position. Uh, this is a demonstration. And uh, after scanning about the, some landmark and anatomies, you can use the inline and freehand technique. Uh, this is a, a demonstration of a, a real-time ultrasound guided middle branch block. Uh, this is a upper cervical level. Uh, this, this is for the lower cervical level. You can see the, the depth of the middle branch or facet. Next, I'll talk about the cervical radicular pain. Uh, I'll talk about ultrasound guided periradicular steroid injection. Most uh, benefit of the ultrasound is to detect nerve and the radicular artery. You can see the pulsation of radicular artery and B mode, and you can see the, the pulsation or color of the radicular artery. So you can see the radicular artery, and you can escape some more dangerous uh, injection. So final destination of steroid injection is the inflamed nerve and, and dorsal root ganglion which is located or uh, in the side of a transverse foramen. Echotexture of no root is very hyperechoic due to the single neural fascicle over uh, a small, uh, small number of neural fascicle and large size of neural fascicle. If you find out the no root, you can see, you can scan uh, this area. If you want to scan more, deep proximal nerve root, you cannot find out the, which one is the root or which one is the uh, perineural tissue because of some artifact. 
So uh, the target is the perineural and intra-subcom neural space of the intertubercular group between the anterior and posterior tubercle of caudal vertebra outside the foramen. So you may suspect that there will be a gap between the ultrasound target and final destination. So I measured the distance between CM target and ultrasound target. So I uh, injected the contrast media or after the ultrasound guide block and without moving the needle, I checked the uh, CM. So I estimate the, the distance in AP and oblique view. Uh, this data shows the, the distance between the ultrasound target and CM target. Most probably, uh, the, the range is from the 1.2 centimeter to 2.3 centimeter. It's very far. So it's like a long part. So how can I get uh, this successful block? So there are several keys to get this successful block. First, uh, set the target in the right position. And if you want to block at 6, 7, or C6, you have to notice which one is a C6 or C7. There's a clue. If you want to block C7, you have to find out some vertebrae. Uh, you know that there is some variation, but you have to know that this is a very useful landmark for identify over C7 root. So another way to identify C7 is the no or tiny anterior tubercle of transverse process of C7. If you want to block the C6, you can find out some an prominent anterior tubercle and a V-shaped relationship between anterior and posterior tubercle. So you, you can see the C6 hypoechoic root emerging from the, this group. If you want to block the C5, you can find the most small size of anterior tubercle and small U-shaped uh, relation between anterior and posterior tubercle. Uh, this is uh, the typical uh, position for a uh, block technique. To maintain this oblique, the cubitus position, you may need there are two wedges and, and one small pillar. And rotate the, the head contractor side and let the patients uh, relax the muscle. This is a typical layout of operator and patient and monitor and assistant to get a maximum visual agent of the, of the root. Uh, you have to uh, compress gently over the, the neck and uh, let the patient to relax their muscle. This is a demonstration of what the block. After scanning and check the, which one is the root or which one is the landmark for uh, optimal uh, injection. And then insert the needle very carefully and inject the fluid very slowly. The next tip is the, uh, how to approach the, the, the target. After finding out the root, you have to approach the needle behind the root. And you may need a fine adjustment. And after that, you have to inject some steroid. The final step is very important, is the putting is money. So this final injection is very, very important step. So you have to do this on the real-time ultrasonogram, and you have to deliver uh, injection to more than 10 seconds. And you have to inject in the, inside the circumneural sheets, and you have to get the confirmed X-ray image uh, with the contrast. This is uh, the procedure of injection process after insert a needle into the behind of the nerve root, you can find the circumneural sheath and you can adjust and inject them slow and very carefully. You can get very diverse contrast pattern after you ultrasound the injection from the optimal to intramuscular injection. I think that this is a fail. 
Uh, this is illustration how to get intracircumneural cyst or perineural injection. If you put the needle inside the circumneural cyst, you can get the optimal image. This is an illustration of a paraneural injection. If you put the needle tip at the wall of the circumneural cyst, you can get some injection in the perineural and some leaks into the intramuscular layer. But if you cannot reach the circumneural cyst, you can only inject the injectant into the muscle layer. This is demonstrating how to get the perineural injection. This is the same patient. You can get the uh, hypoechoic, well-defined uh, nerve root, and you can put the needle behind the nerve root, and you can find out which one is the circumneural or intra-circumneural space. This is a de demonstration about the intramuscular injection. You can now find out which one is nerve or circumneural uh, perineural tissue. So you can get the optimal uh, position. So if you inject uh, for this uh, image or position, you can only get this intramuscular injection. Uh, this is another uh, case for the perineural injection. Uh, this is some intra perineum but some leaks into the muscle. But uh, this is okay if I uh, analyze the result of the injection. Uh, the perineural and paraneural injection uh, shows the good result compared to intramuscular injection. After a correlation study of the contrast pattern and ultrasound real-time imaging, you can get this imaging from perineural and paraneural or intramuscular injection. With a perineural injection, you can see hypoechoic or crescent or perineural halo or surrounding nerve, nerve root. But sometimes some, some hypoechoic fluid are extend to the, the nerve. So uh, in this case, uh, uh, it's uh, less optimal for compared to the perineural injection. So perineural injection is relatively good compared to the intramuscular injection. If you cannot any nerve root, or you can only hypoechoic swelling of the intramuscular layer, you can only see some this result. My conclusion is that uh, understanding the gross anatomy uh, and ultrasound sexual anatomy is essential for effective and safe usage of ultrasound and different block technique in facet and middle branch and root. And subcalgia and cervical brachialgia is, can be effectively managed with the ultrasound intervention procedure if the proper indication and precise intervention are taken are applied. Adequate contrast pattern coupled with the characteristic real-time ultrasound imaging are relative for better clinical outcomes in ultrasound guided non-block. Thank you. <laughs>